Hello, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a really long time since I've made a video. I'm really sorry about that. But from now on, I'm gonna do my best to upload more videos. In this quick video, I'm gonna show you guys how to displace objects correctly using geometry nodes in Blender. I did show you guys how to displace objects in Blender using geometry nodes previously, but it wasn't actually the best way of doing it. So that is why I'm making this video to fix that. So let's get started by opening a blender and deleting everything then going uh, then, then going to the geometry nodes workspace I'm gonna change the way of the workspace because I really don't like the way it is right now I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna swap the areas then I'm gonna move my mouse over to this corner of the window then click and drag down to maximize ex to expand this workspace then I'm gonna do the same here to close the spreadsheet editor and to expand the geometry nodes editor. Now this is great. Let's get started by adding an object so that we can displace it. I'm gonna add a sphere but I'm not gonna use a UV sphere because it has triangles and it, it is gonna look really bad when we are gonna displace it. So instead I'm gonna use a round cube if you don't and instead I'm gonna use a round cube and if you don't see it right here that is because you haven't oops that is because you haven't enabled the extra objects from the preferences it comes by default so just enable it and save the preferences if you don't have other save preferences on let's close this and let me just also enable the screencast keys add-on so you can see the keys that I'm pressing right here now let's add the mesh round cube and this is a cube with rounded corners but we don't want that instead we're gonna choose a quad sphere and let's just select this around cube and this is exactly like a sphere but it is made up of quads quad means faces with four vertices and this is perfect for displacing so let's just delete this UV sphere and move this to the wall center let's get started by creating a new geometry node 3 now to displace an object the node we need is the geometry sample sorry geometry right set position and we can use this offset to move around this object if you are thinking why aren't we using a geometry operations transform geometry why aren't we using a transform geometry that is because this applies to the entire object instead instead of having the option to move the vertices individually and using the set position node we can individually move around the vertices and you can tell because the socket is a diamond with a dot in it when a socket is a diamond with a dot that means that the value can be different per element so how do we displace this thing for that we need a node called the normal node you can click and drag and just search it up that is really cool way of doing it but I'm also gonna show you guys where it is located so if you forget the name you can just found it in the input uh, sorry you can found you can find it in the geometry read normal and let's just plug this into the offset and see what happens now when we do this you can see that the object gets inflated and this is actually what should be happening because if you don't know what a normal is a normal is the direction of a face so let me just show you this how this works I'm gonna just uh, unplug this I'm gonna go to edit mode and in the mesh edit overlays we can enable the face normals and increase the size and now you can see these hair like things these are actually the normals of our faces and you can see that these are facing towards the direction of our faces 
So let's go back to object mode and let's plug this into the offset. So right now our object is already being pushed to the direction of our normals. We just need to manipulate it. So what we can do is because this is vector, because this is purple, vector is a combination of three different values, the x and x, y and z axis. Vector! That's me, with both direction and magnitude. So we're gonna add a node utilities vector, vector math node. Plug that here and switch this from add to multiply. Now this gets back to the original shape. That is because it is being multiplied by zero. Now we can use this to kind of scale the object. Now this is perfect. We can just use uh, we can we can just use our texture now. So let's add a texture, noise texture, and plug this into the vector. Now this is working, but let's add some more subdivisions so that we can really see what is happening. Let's add a subdivision surface node. Also, this is located in the geometry operations. Sorry, it is located in the mesh operations and uh, subdivision surface node. I already, I always forget where the nodes are located. Let's increase the number of subdivisions and let's decrease the scale of our noise texture. Something like that. It looks really wobbly. Now the displacement is working, but there's something wrong here. Let me just mute and unmute the node by pressing M and I'll let you guess what is wrong here. So this is what it looks like with the displacement on and this is what it looks like with the displacement off. Again, on, off, on, off. Do you see the difference? So if you haven't, uh, so if you haven't noticed by now, if I disable the set position node, you can see that the that the boundaries of our object is around here. And when I enable the displacement, you can see that the boundary is here. It's quite a lot of difference, isn't it? To explain you this better, let me just quickly add a plane. Go to edit mode. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit, and I'm gonna subdivide this by around 30 times or something like that we can disable the face normals and let's add a geometry nodes modifier and choose the node tree that we created now you can really see the difference here the whole object is moving up now the reason for this happening is because displacement maps and the noise texture goes from a value of 0 to a value of 1 if you think about it, when we use this for a displacement, the displacement's only gonna happen in the positive direction and not in the negative direction. So to fix this, what we can do is we can add a utilities, we can add a utilities math node, plug that here, set this to subtract and use the default 0.5. And you can see that this is magically working. The reason for this working is previously it was from a value of 0 to a value of 1 but now it becomes negative 0 0.5 to a positive 0 0.5 so the displacement will also now be in the negative direction. Now I did not came up with this solution by my own. I learned about this from Arendelle. So let's just erase all of this. And the last thing we need is the strength for the displacement. So we can just duplicate it, plug it, plug it here and set it to multiply. Now the really important thing here is it needs to be after the subtract node. Otherwise it is not gonna work the way it is intended. So now we can use the strength as well. Let's just set that to 1. And to reuse this displacement, we can create a node group. So let's just select all of these nodes. I'm not gonna select the noise texture, but if you want, feel free to do so. So let's just select all of these, press Ctrl G to group these. Let's make some more space right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the N key to open up the sidebar. 
I'm gonna select this input which is which is called value by default but we can call this displacement or you can also call it sorry displacement you can also call it displacement texture change the type from float to color and let's just also plug the strength into the here and rename this to strength we can also plug this subtract node and this is the mid-level value that is present in all the displacement modifier and also the node in the shader editor now we can go out of this node group by pressing tab and there we go we have our own node group that we can reuse in our future projects and we can call this displacement displacement if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up make sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos and I'll be back.